Well, good afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. Take it boo. Take boo to cup of coffee. I thought I would do a shout out and a review. Somebody asked me to do a review of something, which I will do. But I will also do a shout out, and that is for DPM Dave Paint Minis. I will leave the link in the description below. The DPM Dave Paints Minis, an interesting looking channel. Um, nice painter by what I've looked at. I haven't really got time at the moment to look at it, but looks like a worthwhile channel. DPM Dave Paints Minis only has 99 subs at the moment. Let's get them into three figures. So DPM Dave Paints Minis. Um, I have finished I finished my coffee I have finished building tank traps because if you remember I had three boxes of these barricade sets so that's the tank traps built pain in the neck to put together don't go together 100% brilliantly I have to say they're not the best fitting thing in the world and it took me a while actually to get my head around how the thing went together <laughs> this um That to me is not the greatest illustration. And I, for some reason, I just couldn't get my head around it. But once once you've built one and you know the sort of form, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, like I say, they they don't go together brilliantly. Because I don't know if you can see it on the end there. These, the top is narrower than the bottom. So if you're trying to butt it up against, with this little stick here, if you're trying to butt it up against that flat surface, it's not going to go because one bit's narrower than the other. If you push both to touch that, then the girder it sat on, it'll lift off, if you see what I mean. So, you're always sort of left, oh, you can see if you can see that, you're always left with a bit of a gap there, which I think the paint will fill when we paint them, but um, not, not really an enjoyable job putting these together. But I can see that when they are done, they're all painted and based up, they'll look good on the table. I can see they'll look good. So I'm going to put three to a base. That's what I thought I'd do. Three to a base. That'll give me six bases of three traps each. That's 18 traps. <coughs> and another problem with them was, before I get off these things, is down the center of each beam with a rotten horrid mold line you had to scrape off on both sides so you think there's three pieces to each one three 18s, what's that? 54 so you've got 54 of these to scrape all the rigid mold lines off and sand, sand them down and I've been over them with a bit of Mr. Surfacer as well. I painted on some Mr. Surfacer once I sort of finished. But there you go, that's the tank traps done. Next job is those there. What I'm going to do for them.
putting the bases together in the, in the triangle, I'm going to make up a jig. Get a piece of wood and some little panel pins. And I'm going to make up a jig. Save, try it. Look at that thing round, trying to get it triangular. I just make up a jig with some panel pins. I'll do it that way. I'm thinking I could. I'm thinking I could make more of these easily with some twigs. Go out with some dead twigs. Cut them to the right length. You could make loads of these easily. But we'll get these done in a bit. Once we finish this video. So that's where we're at. Um, what I thought I would do was I'd make everything up before I got into spraying the primer. I'm going to spray the primer on this slot with this airbrush. Give me a chance to find out what the airbrush is like. I didn't want to make the tank traps, spray them, then make the barricades, spray them. We'll, we'll just make all this stuff up and the kit figures. We'll make it all up and we'll have one decent session of spraying on the primer. We'll, we'll do it that way. Say, say messing about. Excuse me. So, somebody was asking for a review, British Legion was asking for a review of this. Excuse me a second. Bunker, Fields of Glory, 135 Flak Bunker. So, we'll have a look at it. Euro would be proud of it, I'm sure. It's made of, um, I assume, sort of plaster of Paris, I assume. So that tells you how heavy it is. What I'll do a second is I'll get the key. Where's my key? Take measure out and we'll measure it for you. It is eight and a quarter inches or 21 centimeters for those of you in modern currency. The widest part is. about 17 centimeters or six and a half inches and the narrowest part of the bottom there 14 centimeters or five and a half inches and thickness wise or depth whatever you want to say is roughly an inch and a half or three and a half centimeters. But that should look very nice when it's painted up. I would imagine <coughs> if you were to drop this on the floor it would break quite easily, I think. Being that it's sort of ceramic -y, if you like. I can't remember, to be honest with you, I can't remember what I paid for it now. It was obviously a reasonable price, otherwise I wouldn't have, wouldn't have bought it. I've got choice of flat guns here that I can put in this. So yeah, 
very nice. I assume made in a mould, I would think, some kind of silicon mould and just whatever jollop they use is just put in. Yeah, very good, very good. So that's the Fields of Glory um, flat bunker. Not really a lot else I can say about it. Well worth buying if you're into 135 stroke sort of 132. Nice, nice piece to have. Nice piece to have. This will go with my Vermax stuff. What I've also got from the same company. If you look, I'll look for a second. If you're looking at look for this bunker, the code number is FOG5139, Fields of Glory 5139. So if you went to Fields of Glory models and put in 5139, you'll get that bunker come up. What I would also have a look at, which I've also got, is this concrete MG bunker. Now this, not so good. Made of the same stuff, and obviously <coughs> made in the same fashion. Concrete MG bunker. FOG 5116, if you're going to look for that. Now this comes in th three pieces. The bottom section. A mid-section. And top section, not supposed to be so the roof. See that it's rather, it's rather 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 on the piss. Look. Let's take the roof off. See you end up with a really great gap there. Or if you block that, you end up with a gap there. It's um, not so good. Not so good. So I'm sort of wondering if you look at that as well. Take that out. If you look at that, that's sort of going downhill. I imagine what they've done is they put this stuff in the mould and the mould is sort of done that and they've not noticed and left it. And it's all gone a bit on the on the piss if you like. So this is gonna take a bit of work to get this sort of up to Sort of up the snuff if you like. It's a nuisance, it's a nuisance. My plan is actually to fix the top of the roof to the top, which is also a bit on the, on the piss actually. My 
idea is to see that's a bit see it's all going to be have to have to be sorted out my idea is to glue the top two pieces together and have this removable from this so you can get your figures inside so I thought probably what I would do once I've got it all sort of level and built up and I think what I'm probably going to do is build it up and fill gaps etc etc with filler mixed with PVA I think that'll do it but what I'm intending to do is make that top section removable from that so I'll put some pins in leave them sticking out and drill out the top section so you can fit the thing on under the pins and it's not going to move about I think that's what I'll do but it needs a needs a bit of work it's all sort of on the going on the piss a bit but it'll look nice when it's done I mean it's just more work uh, more work for you the modeler so nice models um, but be warned um, having looked at this one be warned if you're going to buy one they can be on the skew a little bit um, but that's the Fields of Glory MG Bunker which you can see will look very nice when it's done all painted up, weathered that'll look pretty good, it's just a bit which needs sorting out but we'll do it, we'll do it at some point we'll get around to it the only other thing I was going to look at away is I said I would review that came in the post the other day was this V2 missile now I've got a V1 somewhere in the stash pile so I thought the V2 would go with it would be good you could have some kind of scenario of bolt action or a rocket launch site and send in a, the airborne or the, or the commandos or something and try and knock it out. So I thought that would be nice. Nice illustration, gives you an idea of what it should look like when you've built it and painted it. And there's, I noticed inside the box here there's different um, camouflage designs, different paint jobs, depending on what period of the war you're intending this to be. So that's nice. And I do believe Yeah, a little piece there telling you about it. Giving you a little right up on it. So I've not opened this yet, so I don't know what it's like inside. I have no idea. So we'll... The seals are broken, but this is what you get when you buy them. Um, so a second hand, if you like. I'm told it's, it's complete, I'm told. Right. First thing is little decal sheet, which is nice. Uh, 
in English. Security text. Okay. Security text sheet. I don't know whether they're expecting it to go off in the box or not. <laughs> Well, that's nice, a little Ravel booklet. Advertising bubble cars, Mr. Schmitz. The only car you can't drive forward into a garage. If you do, when you come up to the M wall, you can't open the front because the front opens on a Mr. Schmitz. You can't get out. <laughs> Here's our instruction sheet. Painting guide on the back. I assume that's to, to scale, I would think so, looking at it. Sheets are separate. I'll staple them later. Doesn't look like an overly overly complicated model. That's your sprue guide. Yeah. And another painting guide there as well, so it gives you four options for what colour scheme you want to do it, right up to 1945 the end of the war, so let's have a look give me a knife, yeah, give me a knife Let's give Auntie Karen a knife. Well, that's security conscious because the bags are double sealed. So hopefully there's no way you're going to lose bits. There's the smallest sprue with an O-ring on it. So it's quite a quite a formidable thing. You can see by the diameter of that ring. Nicely detailed, I've got to say. A load of injector pin marks there, but they're underneath, so they shouldn't concern us. sides of the missile. Nicely detailed with all the riveting, I've got to say that looks good. I don't know whether you can, probably not going to see it on this. 
I'm not taking I'm not take it out the bag because that's how little bits get lost. You see the rivet I think you can just about just about see the riveting on that. That's done all over. That's done all over. So that's gonna be I thought where's my where's my um give me the key, give me the key, I get the tape measure back out, just measure this up for me. Just a rough guide. Five and a half. Nine and a half. Yeah, so you can measure that, yeah. Fourteen. Was at least fourteen inches. It's going to be at least at least four, fourteen inches. That's a considerable. That's a considerable rocket. But we are talking one three five scale, I suppose. Wow, we, wow, we. So that. Quite a considerable model, bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, a bit more right up on it there. Doesn't actually say. size of the finished model. So that's not to scale. That's not to scale. Does it say inside? Uh, no, I don't think it does. Very considerable model, but not a huge Not a huge degree of parts to it, which is okay. So we'll have a go at making that before long. <laughs> Printed in Germany. <laughs> Had to be, isn't it? Oh, habits die hard. But that's the Ravel A4 V2. World War II German missile. Yeah, nice looking kit. Nice looking kit. Nicely detailed. Not a huge. A lot of parts. To be honest with you. with you I can't see really any flash at all which is fantastic I do see however quite a lot of very small injector pin marks so they're gonna have to be dealt with but outside of that yeah fantastic fantastic indeed Here you go, here you go. So that's me done. I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee and get on with these 
barricade, make up a jig, and get these barricades sorted out. So thanks to everybody for subscribing. If you if you've subscribed, like I said, if you subscribe, must be that to my glue, must be the fumes of it or something. It's the only thing I don't like about that is the bloody fumes on it. And to that effect, I'll tell you, to that effect, I bought some other glues. We're gonna try out some other glues. I bought Ravel glue. Um, Army Painter glue I bought and Citadel glue so we'll be trying them out when they get here see if they're any better than these I mean that's okay as glue, don't get me wrong, it's good glue but it just stinks to high heaven it's probably not healthy for you so we're going to try some more glue anyway, anyway I'm rambling now if you subscribed recently thanks very much for all your comments and you know whatever thanks very much um, it's greatly appreciated we will see you on the next one when we've done the